Hi folks, my name is Dr. David Culler. Today we're going to show you how we do Cox flexion distraction and we're going to discuss Cox flexion distraction and what uh, the technique is used for. If you've been searching on the internet trying to find information on Cox technique, Cox technique is a technique that is part osteopathic and part chiropractic. So a um, Dr. Cox invented it and he's an osteopath and his son is a chiropractor and he evolved the technique and improved it vastly. Now Dr. James Cox, the chiropractor, is now in his 80s give or take and he is an incredible chiropractor. This technique is awesome, okay? If you suffer from a disc herniation, a disc bulge, spinal stenosis, pinched nerve sciatica, this is the gold standard for those conditions, okay? So Cox Technique is the gold standard for this. So we're gonna show you how we perform Cox Technique. So we have this young lady here who has a degenerative disc at L5-S1 and occasionally gets sciatic neuropathy but more importantly, she's got that squashed disc at L5-S1. So we want to go ahead and uh, open up that space, not only uh, decompress the disc, but open up the facet joints and open up the gap where the nerve exits through the spine. So that's what this technique does, okay? So you'll see here I'm going to brace my hand higher up. Now I know she has a disc uh, herniation at L5-S1 and a degenerative disc at L5-S1. That's the bottom disc in the lower back. So we're going to work our way down towards L5-S1 with her. And we're going to start up a little bit higher. And we do that on purpose. We want to tolerance test the patient. And I see a lot of chiropractors that are not certified in this technique. And they just, I don't know where they're putting their hands. They're putting their hands all over the place. And it's not in the right place. So make sure just because the doc has a table doesn't mean he, do, he knows what he's doing, okay? Um, there are specific protocols and you notice I have her legs strapped in here. She's already passed protocol one. You should never do that with somebody that hasn't been put through the first protocol and tolerance testing them. We've already tolerance tested her and we've already adjusted her many times this way. So uh, we don't need to do that. But you'll see here, I'm placing a, a semi-light hand placement here on the spine, and we're decompressing everything below this level. So we are opening up the facet joints, opening up the space where the nerve exits, and taking pressure off of that disc. So it's similar to traction or decompression, but better than decompression, because it goes specifically to the joints that need to be de decompressed and it puts the spine in flexion, taking pressure off not only the discs, but the spinal cord and the nerves. If you suffer from a disc bulge, a disc herniation, spinal stenosis, pinched nerves in the lower back or the neck, Cox flexion distraction technique is the gold standard. And if you look up the research, most of it's out of Indiana University. There's a ton of research on their website, Cox technique spelled T-E-C-H-N-I-C, not with a Q, dot com. So that's C-O-X-T-E-C-H-N-I-C dot com. And if you want to learn more information on the Cox Technique, you can always go to our website, www.synergywellnessny.com. And you'll see here what I'm doing is I place my hand up high, and I'm starting up higher for a reason. Because if she's got herniations in the upper low back, um, I could make her worse. She might not get off the table. So we don't want to do that. So it's really important that the practitioner knows what they're doing and is certified in the technique. And Dr. Cox will agree with that. Um, he certifies people a couple times a year and has seminars throughout the year. And every couple of years, we have to get recertified again in the technique because there are new... Uh, procedures that come out and he's always improving the technique but um, regardless this technique is the gold standard and Priscilla uh, tell me um, you've had sciatica before you've had some 
you know, back pain, you sit all day for work. How has the Cox technique helped you um, as far as the, the difference between this technique and just the traditional chiropractic technique? That's a big difference. Okay. That's helped me a lot. Good. So now I'm getting lower with my hand placement down to L2, L3. And we're going to start now decompressing all the discs right now below my hand. And that includes the disc that you have that's degenerative at L5S1. And after we do that, we kind of come in here and we loosen up the soft tissue around the spine. And go ahead and take some deep breaths in and out. Good. And again, deep breath in and out. And once we're able to loosen up the muscles along the side of the spine, the iliocostalis, the quadratus lumborum muscles, um, that really opens things up. And then when I go back to do the flexion distraction technique on her, we're going to feel some uh, releases in the spine and it's going to be a little bit easier for her. When I was just doing that then, um, was it stiff across your lower back? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do it again here in a minute, and it should ease up a bit, okay? And deep breaths in and out. So research shows that when we sit down, we're putting 220 pounds of pressure on our discs, give or take. And when we're standing, that's about 75 pounds less pressure on the back. So sitting uh, can be detrimental for people with disc herniations, disc bulges, sciatica, or disc, disc degeneration, which they also call disc desiccation, when you lose the fluid in the discs and the height of the disc is much smaller. So sitting can become very difficult. There are uh, some solutions besides Cox technique. On a day-to-day, -day, you can s sit with a cushion called a sacral wedge. And be careful where you get your sacral wedge from. They're not all made equally. Uh, I recommend one from Relaxo Back. It's, got, it's made from a dense foam. So the heavier you are, if you weigh, if you're overweight, then you need to get one from Relaxo Back. Uh, because it's made from the dense foam. The uh, other ones I've found are cheap foam and they just, when you squeeze them, they just squeeze right down. There's no, there's just no give to it. Uh, it's just, you sit on it, it goes flat. So you want to make sure that you have some dense foam there to sit on. And what it'll do is the, there's a cutout in it and it'll open up uh, the space where your sacrum would sit and it'll take a lot, uh, a lot of pressure off your sacrum and pressure off the discs. So instead of having 220 pounds of pressure on that lower disc while you sit, you know, with this sacral wedge, you might have closer to 150 pounds of pressure. And if you add that up over hours and hours during the day, you'll realize um, that it has a big effect on you. So to be able to take that 75 pounds of pressure off your lower back for up to eight hours a day while you sit, Okay, so I just loosened up the left side for her. That side tends to be much tighter for her, and that side of her hip tends to ride up. So that's why I did just that left side. Now tell me, how does it feel now? Looser? Yeah. Okay, and then we're going to follow up with a side posture adjustment. I do not recommend doing this on every case, uh, every disc case, just because uh, she's not acute and we've treated her a long time. She does well with a side posture adjustment. So we're going to go ahead and start you with this side up. Okay. Okay, and the other side up. OK. 
Okay, and on your stomach. Take a deep breath in and blow out. And on your back. Any headaches? No, not so good. Okay. How about in the last week? Mm, not really. Okay. Okay, stand up over here, face me. Okay. Okay, great. All right, everybody, that's it. Thanks for tubing in, and thanks for showing everybody what Cox Flexion Distraction Technique is like. Thank you.